presented briefly last year about a project that we were embarking on, which was to help um, transfer our grades from our um, Moodle into our student record system, which at the University of Bath is um, sits tribal. Um, it's a project that our developers, um, John and Atesha, um, have been working on for the last sort of year and a half, and we've been leading it as a tell team across the institution. We are looking at automatic transfer of grades because we've seen a, a massive increase in online summative assessment on our Moodle courses, um, both in specifically the um, kind of assignments and also the quizzes. And the feedback we get from staff continually is like, oh, now I've got to download these grades and somehow get them into the student record system. Um, and then add on the complexity of anonymous marking on top of that, it can sometimes be quite a challenge for them. Um, there was one sort of um, event a few years ago, for instance, where some of the programme teams had to employ people specifically to go back into the student record system and check the grades for consistency because things had gone in um, slightly wrong. And so, for instance, some of our faculties this year already, we've seen 22,000 submission points for one, um, one faculty, but only about 4,000 of them being marked online. And one of the justifications academic staff say for not marking online is because there's no easy way for getting those grades into the student record system automatically. So what we're trying to do with this tool is to um, lead to wasted time, reduce wasted time, um, and hopefully increase staff um, satisfaction and reduce their frustration with using different systems. So where we were at, we, are, we rolled out with the um, solution about a week or sort of two weeks ago. So we're just about sort of keeping an eye on it to see what's, what's happening. And we're expecting the main bulk of people to be starting to use the tool um, after Easter when um, sort of assignment marking takes place. We've worked very closely with our student records um, team. Um, our developers here have been doing on the coding and testing. We ran a small pilot um, last year, so we have a sort of sense of how it, uh, how it goes. And then we've been providing sort of training and development um, ever since. One of the things for a project like this, um, first of all, for us as our team, it's really helped us open our eyes to some of the processes um, in other teams across campus. And it's particularly the sort of student records um, team. Um, I think it's probably fair to say the, the complexity of a student record system in university is mind-boggling to those who aren't using it every single day. And the amount of, sort of exceptions and oddities that occur and how you then program for that has been a real challenge. We've been working also with our professional service teams, sort of, um, specifically the faculty support, to try and um, have a unified approach to how staff can transfer their grades um, on, the, records, uh, on the, the VLE. And also with our um, registry, um, our sort of quality department to make sure that everything um, is absolutely, um, we're sure that the right grade is ending up in the right box in the student record system. Um, there were lots of kind of quality controls and checks that we had to go through to um, sort of satisfy our kind of registry team. Um, so this is just available on your plugin does, or how you made it. We've got two different plugins. One is a local plugin that uh, we'll cover it later, shows you how to select a mapping uh, to the grade you want to transfer to. And the second plugin gives you an overview of what has, has not been transferred and give you a transfer option. Um, so we have a um, student record system called SITS, um, which has a plugin to expose web services called StuTalk. Uh, we've, we've used that uh, for the grades transfer. So what it does is exposes a REST API, which is just a web service call. We tap on that web service, and we basically exchange XML saying, there's a grade to be put in, and here's a grade, fill that XML and send it back. So basically that's what it does in a nutshell. Um, it took us a couple of months, it, it took uh, the vendor a couple of months to get that sorted, but we're finally there now. Um, so just to give you an overview of what the functionalities of this plugin are, is we support anonymous assessments which does not mean that we support blind marking, but we support um, if, if an assessment is anonymous in the student record system, we kind of get the number behind the scenes and send that through Moodle. So we don't need to know what student belongs to, but behind the scenes, we are still doing the work so that it goes anonymously in SAMIS or SITS. Um, we have a queuing functionality, which is basically, instead of sending it ad hoc at that point, uh, we are que queuing it in an in a ad hoc task, uh, which is a Moodle API. Uh, I'll come to that in a second on why we use that. Um, lock mappings, once you transfer a grade from A to B, we don't want academics to switch their assessment location. 
to, to confuse us or the students. So once a grade has been transferred successfully, it kind of locks it. So unless you unlock it or get admins to unlock it, you can't transfer to a different one. Um, it's just to maintain sanity, I suppose. Uh, transfer history is, is, is just, I think it's a feature we wanted for admins so that we can see what has happened over time, uh, just to keep an eye on everything's going well as part of our pilot. Um, I'll, I'll speak about one or two features and I'll pass on to my colleague to speak about the rest. So as I said, um, students mark anonymous in the record system and we use a candidate field behind the scenes to map it internally. Um, we, but we, we don't support blind marking in Moodle as of yet. I'm not sure if that's a plan to do so. So blind marking needs to be lifted in Moodle first so that we can send it through to the student record system. Um, yeah. The second one is skewing functionality. Like I said, uh, StuTalk is really, really slow uh, because we do four or five web service calls. And to transfer a single grade at that point, it takes about nine seconds. We thought that was not acceptable. Is why we, it's, uh, it's for the same reason we queue it uh, in the ad hoc queue. So you can have 15 grades all queued in about three seconds. And then the cron can do its job to send it to um, Samus or SITS. Uh, that's J jQuery powered, so we're just using simple uh, Moodle dialogues to send that through. Okay, I'll just pass over to our colleague, yeah. John. Yeah, this is the um, new set, um, section we created on the assignment settings. Um, there's only two, two settings on here. One is the actual assessment you're trying to map to within the student record system, and the second one, which is optional, is the, the, the time that you maybe want it to automatically do the grade transfer behind the scenes. Um, if you don't select that, you would have to do the grade transfer manually by clicking a button, which we think might be the preferred option anyway. Um, when you load this page, it actually um, contacts um, the student record system in real time and updates the, the list here so the drop down is up to date. Um, unfortunately, to actually create this new section within the, uh, the assignment settings, we had to do a Moodle core hack but it's a hack that we think we can live with. It's only a few lines long, so uh, and we, <laughs> we think we're okay with that. And this, again, is the same section, but this is after a grade's been transferred. As you can see, we've got a few new things ha uh, happen here. Um, we've got a new uh, unlock mapping box, but this is only visible to admins. So we don't want um, teachers to be able to do this unlocking. And, um, the drop-down menu is now locked, is now disabled, so you can't change it. And there's a little note in there to say it's in use. And obviously, you can't change the transfer date either. Now, the one thing we were, we were worried about here was, um, in fact, we go to the next, part, the next slide. So the locking the mappings, the main um, reason behind it is if a teacher was to create a mapping into the student record system and then do some transfers, then realize they made a mistake, go back in again, do, make, change it to what they think is correct, and then make some, do some more transfers. They're basically scattering their grades throughout the student record system, and it's just going to be a, a nightmare to correct. So we'd, we'd create some, if somebody does make a mistake, they can only make the mistake once, and then go and speak to somebody who can actually fix it. So that was the main idea behind the locking. Um, so this is the grade report plugin, which is part two of our integration. Uh, as you can see, we've got... Um, mapping attributes to say this is what you've mapped to. So you can be doubly sure that this is the right home where it goes to. Um, we have a great status which says six out of 86 have been transferred and you have others to do. You can, it's just a shortcut to go back to the grades, grade book and grade again if you want to. Uh, transfer status, which is you can either schedule a transfer going back to the previous screen or you can do it ad hoc which is a transfer all button, which is, just gives you, so grades that have been graded, you can hit transfer all, it'll give you a summary of, are you sure you wanna do this, and just go. Um, the next bit of that page is on the next slide, is, it's very similar to how a grade report looks like, which is user details, the grade they, they, they have been given, uh, when they were last graded um, by an academic, and if they have been transferred, we just confirm that by saying they've transferred 55. We have several outcomes, which John will speak in a minute, to say at what stage the grade transfer is at. Uh, as mentioned before, we have the history button to see what has been done with that 
particular grade. And you can also individually, either if you see the checkbox, you can select as many as you want, or just do one at a time. Yeah, one of the main problems with int integrating a third party system is lots of unexpected things might happen. So we're very aware that we needed to um, log pretty much everything. So we have lots of outcome codes for lots of different things. Some of them are related to failures in the, f the other system. Some of them are related to configuration problems that the teachers created. Um, something like maybe they haven't, in the, one of our policies is all grades must be out of 100 in the student record system. If that's not the case, we have to log that. Don't do the transfer. So we've got a whole set of outcomes that um, helps us as admins to actually fix problems that maybe people have created. So, so also, we, once we've logged all these outcomes, we can, um, I don't know if you saw on the grade transfer report, there was an extra button for our, the admins could see to click and we could get a full, um, well, the last 20 records. Obviously, we don't expect maybe 20, 20 records. The, the example up here is um, for one that worked uh, perfectly success, successfully. But maybe if a teacher had a repeated problem and they were getting frustrated with it, we'd be able to go through the logs, find out exactly what happened, and advise them on how to, to fix that problem. OK, um, before we could deploy the code, we had to make sure we had a few quality standards we had to, to meet. Um, we, we used PHP Storm as a programming uh, tool, and we, basically, we, could, we got the, the coding standards from the Moodle site, and we could um, install them into PHP Storm, and that ensured that all of our code was Moodle compliant. Um, after that, we also had to have our code checked by our hosting supporting company, our hosting partner, and they did a full review of the code and actually passed it as, um, as, as fine. Um, that's basically just to check that we haven't done anything nasty that um, might compromise the SLA. So that has uh, been very helpful as well. Okay, so um, the pilot that we did uh, initially, um, we tried to do it across a range of um, subjects and across campus. The one that really stands out, we work very closely with the social and policy sciences um, department, who perhaps do the most kind of traditional sort of forms of assessment in terms of long, long assignments. So that's probably why there's been such a huge uptake. Also, internally in their department, they were trying to push for 100% online marking and assessment, which they've now achieved. So we're working very much closely with them to push, use the tool to help um, push the grades across. So one of the problems as an institution we've found is um, sort of online marking has kind of drifted in across, across the years and sort of anonymous marking drifted in across the years as well. And the different faculties and departments have ended up with their own approaches to how they, they deal with the marking process. One faculty, for instance, last year spent six months trying to map the, just the, the assignment process. Um, it's devilishly complicated when you're adding things like blind marking, um, moderation, and all the rest of it. And the faculties have ended up with a different approach. So in, in addition to rolling out this tool, we've also been doing a lot of work process mapping across the, the team to try and sort of streamline the process. One of the other changes that we made um, is that in our Moodle, sort of the, the, the roles for users, we created a brand new role called Teacher Plus, um, which we have given, that's the user who can actually transfer the grade. So we wanted to know who had the right to press the transfer button. Anyone who's a teacher on that course can mark the work, but we've limited the ability to transfer it to what we call the unit convener, so the person who has overall control of that module. At the moment, that's the only information we can pick out of our student record system, who we know who's on that um, module and has the right to teach on it. As that changes, we we'll, might, might give other people the ability to transfer the grades as well. And as an institution, as a TAL team, it's really useful to have a better sense of what summative assessment is actually happening on Moodle at the moment, unless the, the lecturer marks something as formative or summative. And um, there's no real way of identifying if something's actually been summatively assessed on Moodle. Um, by mapping these assessment points to assessment points in our student record system, in the future we should get a better understanding of where um, a summative assessment is actually happening in our VLE. Um, as you'd expect with a large integration like this one, which took more than a year, we had some, well, quite a few challenges to overcome. Um, I'd say we'd learn a lot, um, but some of them here are, because, uh, if, if you remember, I had said you can queue 10 to 15 grades and then, or, or you can list them and then queue them in one go. Uh, because every queuing is an Ajax process, uh, it was kind of rate limiting the server, but after a while server said, I can't take that page anymore, so you have to stop doing it. So I think we, we got an external host, I'm looking at Simon here, to actually 
uh, up that limit for that page. So that helped. Um, uh, multiple occurrences, this is, this is a tricky one. Uh, you can have a cohort with students who, can, uh, who are on different occurrences in the same year. Uh, this, this was tricky because you would not get the right student from the web service to send back to. So we had to work around this with our um, SITS slash SAMIS team. Um, proxy, uh, proxy issues, because our Moodle is hosted externally and our SAMIS or SITS is hosted internally, we had to solve proxy so that everyone can talk to each other without any problems. So that was a learning curve. And generally, we made sure the quality of the data in SRS was as accurate as possible, which is getting the right data from SITS, matching that up to Moodle, and sending the right grade back. So just on that point, um, where you saw the drop-down menu where the, the lecturer can map the assignment, that information is coming directly from the information in the student record system. So one of the added benefits of this tool, we hope, is to start cleaning up that data. So when a lecturer logs in, just says, sees essay, 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 um, in order to map their assignment correctly, they need to know which essay that's mapping to for that module. So hopefully the quality of the data that's contained in the student record system will also slowly improve over time as well. So the plans lie ahead. Obviously, we've just released it, so we are very keen to sort of work with our academic colleagues to see how it goes. Um, as a wider project for the university, we're also thinking about how we might merge this plugin um, that's been developed into some, um, a bigger suite of plugins. Um, so we're currently looking at, um, we've already got a tool that brings our students in from the student record system, but we're looking at a much bigger um, project about what we actually bring into our VLE from our different data sources um, automatically. So one potential, now we have this tool in place, is do we think about automatic creation of assessments in our VLE? from our student record system. So rather than getting the lecturer to map the assignment themselves, could it actually be created and mapped automatically and locked down um, as a process. That's something that we're thinking about. We haven't chosen to go down that yet, but we're, we're keeping that in mind. And the next stage, we're just doing testing. Currently, it only works on the assignment, and um, John and Natasha just coded it for the quiz, and we're just testing that to make sure that it will work for the Moodle quizzes um, as well. Thank you very much. Any questions? Oh, there's one at the back, I think. Um, hi, we've been looking at doing something similar at the moment, and we found there's, we have quite a lot of students going through reassessment. Mm -hmm. So do you handle reassessments, or do you just limit it to initial assessment only? This is for um, just the main assessment point. Um, so um, when we ask lecturers to map their assignment in the, um, uh, at the assignment creation point, once that's mapped to an assignment in the student record system, it's locked down. So unless the reassessment is added as a separate submission point, assessment point in the student record system, they won't be able to use the tool. So they'll have to man manually mark that and transfer it themselves separately. Okay, and within the VLE, do you know which students are currently going through reassessment? We wouldn't necessarily be able to expose that in the VLE directly, but we can get that from the student record system. But I don't know if we would identi easily identify that from the, the student, um, from the VLE at the moment. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, we've been looking at this as well, and we found that, at least on our Moodle, one entry for assessment in the student record system didn't necessarily mean one single activity in Moodle. Yep. Does that happen for you? Yep, so the classic is that on the, the module outlines that's been validated by the university, or say like 50% essay, and in reality the lecturers delivering that is 5-10% individual little assignments, but that's not recorded anywhere. So it can only be a one-to-one -one mapping with our tool. So um, if you're doing it, it won't work. So we've said to lecturers, if, you know, you have to go and change that in the, the unit documentation. So then there are five drop, drop boxes in, in the student record system to put the grade into. Yeah, I don't think that would work at us. We, we kind of went down the 
route of creating a column in the gradebook and getting the, oh, well, we haven't actually implemented it yet, but then getting the academics to move in the actual items that they use for that piece of assessment into the category and then exporting that. Yeah. So one of the one of the things our student record system team right from the outset absolutely said we don't really want staff playing around with that in the VLE. Um, we certainly don't want staff waiting things in the VLE or trying to do any form of calculation in the VLE. That's got to be done in the student record system. And one of the other reasons why we went down the call hack approach. Um, so one we did speak to Moodle um, last year and we sort of showed off the tool um, and. One of the reasons why we didn't do it in the kind of gradebook end is our staff don't get it and they mess it up and they start doing weird and wonderful calculations and then they don't quite know how they've managed to end up with what they've got. So we wanted to try and keep staff well away from that as possible. Makes sense. Yep. Hi. Hi. Um, I just thought I'd mention that over at Croydon College, we're doing something similar with FE um, integrations with things like ProMonitor, um, which we're piloting at the moment. Um, so that might be useful for any anyone out there, any colleges. Um, I think the approach that we're taking is looking over at stuff over in, in our case, it's Pro Solutions, getting the information from courses into the assignment through a plugin that way. All the units could be selected through a drop down mm -hmm. and then you can um, assign various scales and outcomes to this and then just export data from the gradebook. Yep. Um, it seems to be quite a simplistic way of doing it, but so far everything does seem to look pretty, pretty good. Yeah, cool. I mean, one thing is, uh, so we haven't put it in core because it's very specific. We've done loads of stuff that's very specific to us, but we're very happy to talk to other institutions about what the approach that we've taken and so I'm sure John and Tash will sort of happy to expose the code as well, sort of see what we've, you know, what we've been doing with it as well and we're happy to learn from others as well. We had a similar issue with the common identifiers between the SITs, the centralized system, and uh, how Moodle is used. Uh, the problem is coming from both sides. The centralized uh, system uh, administrators do not want to change their approach to modeling common identifiers. The tutors on the other side do not want to change their own way of uh, tutoring and marking. And uh, if you have to go in the middleware to create another layer of uh, actually, uh, say, <coughs> mapping to what SITS has got and what Moodle has got, to be honest, it's a lot of politics around. It's not a technical issue. Uh, so you have, for example, the 50% is going actually to 20 small uh, activities or uh, one activity goes to three six, uh, codes. And, uh, I don't know, it's not an easy thing to resolve. No. Um, one thing that might work in our favor is the uh, next year the university is embarking on what is called curriculum transformation. So every program will go through a review. So we have the option now to go in with these teams and actually try and get that assessment pattern right from the start and sort of iron out some of these kinks that have kind of occurred over time. Um, yes, it's certainly, a, so one of our faculties, the Faculty of Humanities, who perhaps does the most amount of online assessments, actually has dual submission. Some mark online, some mark on paper, some mark on paper, but put the mark in online. And it's an absolute muddle when the candidate number, which is produced from the student record system, is not a unique identifier. It gets reused. And then how they match that up, and it's been an absolute nightmare. So yes, I, I share the pain. <laughs> So thank you very much. This was the last presentation, so now is lunchtime. <laughs>